Jeremiah 2. It's interesting that uh, Isaiah has 1 through 39 before the fall. And then, I guess that's of Jerusalem. And then Jeremiah has the first 39 chapters is before the fall of Jerusalem. And Jonah was told to go and proclaim to Nineveh that within 40 days the Lord would send judgment. So it's interesting that the 40, approximately 40 comes up a lot of times. And I pray the Lord is coming along for him. Anyway, Jeremiah 2 and the word of Jehovah came to me, saying, Go cry in the ears of Jerusalem, saying, Thus saith Jehovah, I remember for thee the kindness of thy youth, the love of thine espousals, how thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in a land that was not sown. So, the Lord is remembering the time when Israel... Um, sought him. Israel was holiness unto Jehovah, the first fruits of his increase, all that devour him shall be held guilty, evil shall come upon them, saith Jehovah. So Israel was holiness or set apart. So the nation he pulled out of Egypt he set apart. And that was the first fruits of his increase, those that would be his followers. And anyone that tried to stop that would be held guilty. Evil shall come before them. Hear ye the word of Jehovah, O house of Jacob, and all the families of the house of Israel. Thus saith Jehovah, What unrighteousness have your fathers found in me, that they are gone far from me, and have walked after vanity, and are become vain? So the nation started out very much set apart by the Lord, very much following the Lord, and so God's asking the question, what is in me that caused you to stray, caused you not to want to have a relationship with me, caused you not to want to um, do things my way? What what fault do you have in me? And the Lord is asking his set-apart people that. Neither said they, Where is Jehovah that brought us up out of the land, that led us through the wilderness, through a land of deserts and of pits, through a land of drought and of shadow and of the shadow of death, through a land that none passed through and where no man dwelt? <coughs> So they knew where the Lord is. They followed his cloud by day, his fire by night. They experienced his very real presence in their lives. And I brought you into a plentiful land to eat the fruit thereof and the goodness thereof. But when ye entered, ye defiled my land and made my heritage an abomination. This is a common theme in the Bible. When people are too comfortable, they tend to start wanting to do things their own way, and they start tend to start turning away from the things of the Lord. So he brought them in the promised land, land of milk and honey, and they started defiling it. The priest said not, Where is Jehovah? And they that handle the law knew me not. The rulers also transgressed against me, and the prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after things that do not profit. <clears throat> so they went from his very real presence in the desert to the priest didn't seek him. The priest didn't think that was important that he should be there. And as we have a relationship with the Lord, we need to 
be aware of his presence we need to be aware he's there they that handle the law knew me not so you have this recorded law that scribes are writing over and over again because there was no printing presses and so that was what they did to pass it down they made handwritten copies of everything over and over again and so they read the law but then they lost the fact that it was God's heart it just became I guess a job when you scribe or when you actually write scripture in your own hand and you think the Lord inspired this it can actually be quite a benefit to you and draw you closer to him the rulers transgressed against me and people started prophesying by Baal wherefore I will not wherefore I will yet contend with you saith Jehovah and with your children's children will I contend For pass over to the Isles of Kittim, and see, and send to Kedar, and consider diligently, and see if there has been such a thing. Hath a nation changed its gods, which are yet, which yet are no gods, but my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. So they went through the desert, their clothes didn't wear out, they had plenty to eat, they get to the promised land and all of a sudden it's like they forgot about him they wanted to do things their own way be astonished O ye heavens at this and be horribly afraid be ye desolate saith Jehovah for my people have committed two evils they have forsaken me the fountain of living waters and hewed out and hewed them out cisterns broken cisterns that can hold no water now this is very um, this is a very good illustration you can have a fountain that's flowing fresh from the source or you can store water in a cistern and drink it later what do you think's fresher the source is fresher So they forsook the Lord and they started doing things their own way. <clears throat> is Israel a servant? Is he a homeborn slave? Why has he become prey? The young lions have roared upon him and yelled, and they have made his land waste. His cities are burned up without inhabitant. The children also of Memphis and Tampanese have broken the crown of thy head. Hast thou not procured this unto thyself, and that thou hast forsaken Jehovah thy God when he led thee by the way? So bad things are starting to happen to them, and they're like, Why is this bad stuff happening to us? And God says, You've forsaken me. When you forsake the Lord's ways, you lose his protections not that it's a name it and claim it it's a it's a prosperity thing at all it's knowing him knowing him and listening to him you will get the direction you need the holy spirit will guide you in the way to go just don't forsake him and now what hast thou to do in the way to egypt to drink the waters of Shehor, or what hast thou to do in the way of Assyria to drink the waters of the river? So he offered them living water in Israel, and they're looking at other countries. Thine own wickedness shall correct thee, and thy backsliding shall reprove thee. Know therefore and see that it is an evil thing and a bitter. 
that thou hast forsaken Jehovah thy God, and that my fear is not in thee, saith the Lord Jehovah of hosts. Fear can be replaced with respect. We don't respect the Lord. We don't fear the Lord. We don't take him seriously. And when we do that, we will end up forsaking his ways. When we do take his ways seriously, when we live our lives along his way, then he knows that we are serious. But even then, there will be tests. There will be, he will test us to see if we really mean what we are trying to convince other people of. Because you cannot, you cannot pull the wool over the Lord's eyes. For of old time I have broken thy yoke and burst thy bonds, and thou saidest, I will not serve. For upon every high hill and under every green tree thou didst bow thyself, playing the harlot. So the Lord freed them from slavery, and they said, You freed us, but I ain't serving. I'm not going to obey you. Yet I had planted thee a noble vine, holy a right seed. How then art thou turned into the degenerate branches of a foreign vine unto me? For though thou wash thee with lye and take thee much soap, yet thine iniquity is marked before me, saith the Lord Jehovah. So his hopes for the nation of Israel were great. And he thought this is these are good people. They can do, well, this is good stock. They'll be obedient. They'll follow me because they've been through slavery. And yet, no, that was not the case. They forsook the Lord. How canst thou say, I am not defiled? I have not gone after the Balaam. See thy way in thy valley. Know what thou hast done. Thou art a swift dromedary traversing her ways. A wild donkey used to in the wilderness that snuffeth up the air in her desire, in her occasion, who can turn her away? All they that seek her will not weary themselves. In her month they shall find her. So they went after the way of Balaam, which was not the ways of the Lord. So if you don't go after the ways of the Lord, you're going after somebody else's ways, and it is sin. And then the donkey getting into flesh, getting into the flesh, taking the world, doing what is pleasing, not doing things the Lord's ways. Withhold thy foot from being unshod, and thy throat from thirst, but thou saidst, It is in vain, no, for I have loved strangers, and after them will I go. So, even as the Lord corrects them, they're saying, No, we're not going to listen to you. We're not going to listen to you. The very same things happening today and has always happened. As the thief is ashamed when he is found, so is the house of Israel ashamed. They, their kings, their princes, and their priests, and their prophets. Now, a thief is ashamed when he is found, or when he's caught, when he's questioned. But is he still a thief? Would he go out and try and rob again? And so there are times when we, the house of Israel, the people of the Lord, feel ashamed because, yeah, we shouldn't have done that, we shouldn't have done that, we shouldn't have done that. But is it changing our hearts? Is our heart to serve the Lord? Is our heart to serve ourself? Who say to a stock, Thou art my father, and to a stone, Thou hast brought me forth, for they have turned their backs unto me, and not their face. But in the time of their trouble, they will asset, they will say, Arise and save us. 
So a tree is our father and a stone is our mother. And if you believe evolution and old earth and that life happened from nothing, then <laughs> here you go. Here's your verse. The Lord said it would happen. And the Lord said it would happen even then. They would rather deny the living God who brought them through the desert and say the tree is their mother. Because when you deny God, you're not accountable to him. So to say we evolved from trees and rocks and dust and whatever, and we deny the Lord, we can uh, justify our actions. We can live any way we want to, and we like that. And we're not living his ways. But where are thy gods that thou hast made thee? Let them arise if they can. Save thee in the time of thy trouble, for according to the number of thy cities are thy gods, O Judah. So the Lord is saying, when the troubles get bad, who's going to save you? Who is going to save you? Call on them. Call on your false wisdom that you have created in your own mind to justify the fact that you don't want to do things God's way. And if you can deny Him, if you can forsake Him, then you feel like you have the freedom to do things the way you want to do. And when you get in trouble, the Lord says, Call on them. Wherefore will ye contend with me? Ye have all transgressed against me, saith Jehovah. In vain I have smitten your children, they receive no correction. Your own sword hath, hath devoured your prophets like a destroying lion. I got an interesting, uh, well, it's interesting what in this world can we take to heaven? And the answer is our children. If we raise them up properly and they give their lives to Christ, then they will go to heaven with us. But there's nothing else in this world that can go to heaven. And so the Lord is saying, In vain I've smitten your children, they receive no correction. So we don't even respect our kids. And I, we live in a time where <clears throat> over a half million a year are dying. Half million a year children dying, being murdered caught, um, under the nice name of abortion because they have been marginalized. And yet... We're talking about race relations and how unfair how unfair the country was to a group of people who lived under slavery 160 years ago. And it was tragic that they lived under slavery that many years ago. But the reality is that now in the last 40 years or so we have killed more babies we have killed our own children in numbers greater than those people who ever lived as slaves 160 years ago. The unborn is marginalized much like blacks were marginalized 160 years ago. You can't defend it biblically. You can't defend the slavery that existed in the South biblically. There is, sla there is slavery listed in the Bible, and God has specific things that needed to happen 
as part of that slavery but it was more of a voluntary servitude and it was something that could be ended during your lifetime and that was that was the way of it so now all we've got is I think it's interesting that we live in a society that is coming up with ways to maintain abortions which you can't biblically defend you can't biblically defend and it's terrible terrible tragedy and so we look back at the people 160 years ago and say all oh, those people who supported that were wrong they were wrong they should have known better and yet there's a whole group over half the society that is doing the same thing to the unborn and they don't feel like they're doing anything wrong they don't know the Lord okay I digressed sorry O generation see ye the word of Jehovah have I been a wilderness unto Israel or a land of thick darkness wherefore say my people we are broken loose we will come no more unto thee so these people say okay God we'll take your blessings we're glad you brought us to this land but we're done with you we're done with you we couldn't have got here on our own we needed your help but now that we're here we're good and you can just go away that's what they're saying to them and that's what a lot of us say to the Lord Can a virgin forget her ornaments or a bride her attire? Yet my people have forgotten me days without number. So it's not like they turned and said, okay, we followed the Lord till yesterday. And today we're going to do our own thing. But the Lord said they've been doing their own thing for so long they don't even remember how long. Days without number. How trimmest thou thy way to seek love? Therefore, even the wicked woman hast thou taught thy ways. So those people who do not follow the Lord, do not know of the Lord, when people turn away from the Lord's ways, they can actually be more evil than people who never knew him to start with. Also in thy skirts is found the blood of the souls of the innocent poor. Thou dost not find them breaking in, but it is because of all these things. The blood of the souls of the innocent poor. When I read a statement like that, I think of the un unborn children. They haven't. They haven't done anything. They are innocent. And yet, they are murdered. Their blood is let out, if you will. Yet thou saidst, I am innocent. Surely his anger is turned away from me. Behold, I will enter into judgment with thee, because thou saith, I have not sinned. Uh, you got to the Lord's going to enter into judgment because we say we have not sinned we need to know his ways we need to follow his ways and we need to pray for his help in following his ways and that we're not stubborn when we deny or we justify actions that are clearly against his his ways then he will enter into judgment with thee. And are we going to tell the one who created us that we are not the way he created us when he knows us better than we know ourselves? Are you really going to try that defense? 
Why gaddest thou, gaddest thou about so much to change thy way? Thou shalt be ashamed of Egypt also, as thou was ashamed of Israel. From thence also shalt thou go forth with thy hands upon thy head, for Jehovah hath rejected those in whom thou trusted, trustest, and thou shalt not prosper with them. So Israel was taking Egypt as an example of live, and Assyria as an example of the way to live, and they were being influenced by these outside people. And the Lord says, I've got my ways. I gave you my ways in the desert. That is the way I want you to live. And if you try and do anything else, it won't prosper. And in the chapters here before the fall of Jerusalem, it sounds like the world we live in today. But instead of Jerusalem falling, the Lord's going to come back and set up his kingdom. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for being able to go through it. Help us, Lord, to cling to you. Help us to know your ways. Lord, help us not to justify our ways. Help us to realize that your ways are the right ways and that we can we can justify no other path even if we surround ourselves with people who tell us a different path is okay lord it is still wrong even if they outnumber us in society it is still wrong if it is not your way yours is the righteous way and any other way is not righteous Help us, Lord, to cling to you in these times. Help us to grow in you. In Jesus' name.